morning. I'm back in the city where I lived for 10 years. That's a quarter of my life after six months. And today I want to tell you what my life was like as an expat, um, what it was like for me when I had COVID here and the restrictions and why I am now no longer based in one of the greatest cities in the world. And here I am, right in the center. I was very fortunate to live in the center. And this is the uh, house, Dom Sem Smolenskaya. I still know the uh, key code to get in, so I'm actually gonna try it just to see. But it's, to be honest, there's nothing really special in the like lobby way, just an old lift. Um, old post boxes to get in a Russian old buildings like this, but let's give it a shot and see if it still works So there's David Noster David Oh, it still works. Wow <laughs> Cool And as I said, absolutely nothing interesting here. So let's move on. When I was living in this uh, building in the winter time, um, the Russians love to pump out the central heating. And it, I'm not joking, it was like a sauna for me. I had to turn off one of the radiators to make it a bit cooler. Um, I haven't got any photos of inside the flat, but I have from outside within this area. Showing when it was snowing. So I'll attach those photos and you can see them in a bit. So I'm not going to show you my walk to work, which usually took about 25 minutes um, in the summer. In the winter, I used to go by metro, obviously, when it's freezing cold and the temperatures can get down to minus 30. And that takes me about, well, took me about 15 minutes. And this building right here is a famous building in Russia, Ministerstva Inostrany Dil which is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And in this building is where ambassadors go if there's any problems between two countries and um, they try and sort it out in that uh, building behind us. Right now, we're gonna go down this street, which is Arbat, the old Arbat street, which is a popular street by many Russian tourists and Moscow bikes. This wasn't in my original plan to record having lunch, but I'm at the Russian fast food chain, Teramok. When I was walking by, I thought I'd stop by, and I'm hungry, so what I decided to take is obviously pancake, Russian kvass, and borscht. When I was living here, the price was only five pounds, but now with inflation, it's gone up to 690 rubles, which is 10 pounds. I can see some tough times ahead for Russians. So what was it like catching COVID in Russia? Well, I first had my test obviously at a hospital with the doctors and it tested positive. As soon as it tested positive, I had a phone call from a doctor saying, you need to stay at home in your flat until someone calls you. The next day, a state doctor came over and he took pictures of me and he told me, you cannot go out, you have to stay indoors 
if you go out, the cameras on the street will recognize your face with facial recognition. He also informed me that I needed to download this application on the iPhone, which I did. And I got a screenshot of it actually, which I'll show you in a bit. And it was called social monitoring. And during the day between nine and 10, I had to send a photo within every hours, every three hours, it was me sending a photo and also my GPS location. And if I hadn't sent that within a certain time, then I would be fined and maybe even arrested by the police. So you could see how strict the restrictions were if you had COVID within Russia. So I'm at the office where I used to work at and this unique pyramid behind me is actually from a fitness club called World Class where you had um, famous British stars such as Craig David the singer go in there or Vinnie Jones and it's apparently the most expensive world class fitness club in Moscow and my office just through the courtyard here is based in this building here Romanov Dvor Chitiri but I'm not going to bother going in there because I don't think I can get in um, but I've got a nice video of the views from the top of this office which I'm going to show you right now I'm now on the street called Nikolskaya and during the World Cup in 2018 this street was the busiest street and they had to even control the crowd by allowing a certain amount of people on the street at the time and also they had metal detectors because there's a lot of uh, dodgy stuff going on <laughs> Just off the street as well, there's actually an expat bar which is called uh, Papa's Bar. And I will be going there tonight, but I might be able just to show you what it looks like in the daylight from the outside. So I've just come off Nikolskaya on the right side, uh, just towards the end of the street. And here is Papa's. Papa's Bar and Grill. Since 1998. On most weekends, you have live music uh, or DJ playing and some good beer deals. So if you're ever in Moscow, this is definitely a place to check out. decided it's time for a beer and I'm at this pub which is called Jaw Spot well it's actually a crap beer bar and their beers are brewed in a city called Yekaterinburg which is in the Urals which is about two hours and a half by plane but what is unique about this place is you enjoy a nice beer in front of the KGB building or FSB as they are known as today
but the weather's turned to the worst. It's non-stop raining now, so it's time to go to yet another pub. And this pub is actually an Irish pub called Paddy's, and it is owned by, in fact, an Irish man. Here it is. So we've got a couple of expats here tonight, but only one guy from Germany over here. And we've got a Scottish guy who I don't understand anything that he says over here. Well, I'm glad because you don't understand where you're from, mate, are you? <laughs> and, um, there's a big, big difference because I'd say about six months ago, this place was rammed. It was a lot, a lot cheaper. Guinness was here, Heineken was here. But if you look at the taps today, look. There's no longer any Guinness, it's now the Eventide, which I've never heard of. And then you've got, for Kilkenny, you've got Brew, and the Heineken tap is still here. But I don't know if they pour any kind of beer from that. But anyway, for me for now, I'm gonna enjoy my whiskey with these two legends from Moscow. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Chin chin, all the best. Cheers. On a successful weekend, yeah. Moscow style. You are. So it's time for me to leave Moscow yet again. Um, I hope to come back sometime, but obviously now my company's moved me back um, to London due to a suspension of services here. Um, I was moved back in March time and uh, I do miss this country a lot. And I really do hope I have the opportunity one day to come back and work here. Um, but for now, I hope you liked this little video about myself, Moscow and some expats. <laughs> like, dislike, and uh, subscribe, and hope to see you soon. Bye for now.